Welcome to the, I am so excited to have you on the show. You are known as the boss diplomat and you really specialize in helping solopreneurs create a premium brand. So this is going to be exciting conversation. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. And considering this is a mompreneur podcast, this is the first time I'm going to put my mummy hat on. So um, yeah, I'll see. Let's see what comes out of my mouth today. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like our mummy hat is always there. And I think it honestly should be in the forefront because there are so many qualities as moms that we bring to serve. And so I think it's it's great that you're able to to shine a light on that today. It's funny because my t-shirt says everything otherwise. It's like everything <laughs> else that I am. Right? I love that. Well, you know, as moms, we're all those things. <laughs> the mummy hat is like there. The mummy right. hat is on, but everything else is on my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So tell us about how you became known as the boss diplomat and how you went from a British diplomat consultant to a personal brand consultant. That's so oh, interesting. Such a long story, but I'll try to distill it down in like a sound bite. Um, so back in the UK, I was a diplomat consultant and I used to do personal branding for politicians and diplomats. Um, you know, these are people with money, status. You can't call them by their first name. You have to call them by their title. So very often is Madam Ambassador or Mr. Ambassador or whatever the title is until they say, you can call me Jim or you can call me Sue. I'm like, okay, cool. So we've gone broke through that barrier. So I used to work with people at the very highest level. And then I moved to America in 2019 and I was like, right, what do I do now? I'm not in DC. I'm nowhere near embassies and governments. I'm in Western Massachusetts. To me, that's like the village. I'm sorry, guys. It's like the village to me because I'm from London. And what I noticed, Angela, was, wow, you guys have so many solo entrepreneurs everywhere, like all walks of life, all in all different stages. There's a lot of people who hate corporate America and don't want to work for them. You want to work for yourself. And I applaud that, but my goodness, you guys are not very good at presenting yourself and showing <laughs> up in your business. There's so many ghost entrepreneurs where you're hiding or you're feeling that imposter syndrome. And that's when I thought, bingo, that's what I'm going to pivot to. I'm going to help solo entrepreneurs show up in their business, become brand ambassadors and be become the face of your business. So that's what I did and so I became the boss diplomat and the nickname you're I'm um, you're trying to say is the fairy boss mother so now I'm the fairy boss mother in America yeah I love that I love that because you know you show up with like this infectious energy so I don't think that you can help but like spread some magic to whoever kind of comes into contact with your content so what are some of the ways that your work as a, a diplomat consultant kind of prepared you for helping solo entrepreneurs? Absolutely everything. So everything I did in my diplomacy year did prepare me for what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of personal brand or even brand strategies. They're talking about colors, logo, typography. What I'm really looking for, Angela, is are you lying to me? What truths are you sharing? And I read between the lines of everything that you share with me. So mm -hmm. what are you not saying or how are you saying things? Or are you just trying to be professional because that's what's expected? Or are you showing the real version of yourself? And how can I use that to your advantage? That's what I bring to the table. And my diplomacy skills brought that to me. You know, I was trained in nonverbal communication. I was trained on how to detect lies. I was trained on emergency situations. And I feel like all of that is really relevant right now. Except you don't know I'm doing that. It's very invisible, but <laughs> I'm doing that when I'm talking to people. So I'm able, to, I'm able to assess people very quickly, but not to your disadvantage, absolutely 100% for your advantage. I love that. And so many mompreneurs, myself at one time included, struggle with being the face of their business. It's it's really an epidemic among entrepreneurs. It's online entrepreneurs, 
especially. So what are some of the common reasons that you've kind of found that we ghost our our audience and our businesses? Yeah, it is definitely an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, And that's for all industry. It doesn't matter if you're selling a product or your service, you have to be visible in your own brand. Because guess what? You are the person who founded this business. There's Mm -hmm. a reason why you started this business. There's a specific problem that you want to help with. You Mm -hmm. are the expert in these very specific things. Why don't you just say that, you know, show Mm -hmm. up, say it. Because people work with people, right? You don't work Mm -hmm. with companies. And think about your realtors. Think about your insurance agents. Think about all of these individuals who represent a company. Do you remember the company that they're representing Or do you remember the agent that you worked with? That is the power of personal branding. Now, imagine if you can bring that into your own business where people are so excited to work with you. They're excited to meet you. They know that you are like the bomb. You're the best at what you're doing. Um, There's no one else that can fix their problem. You are the only one that can fix and help this individual. That is all your personal brand. That has nothing to do with your company and what it's called has nothing to do with color psychology or whatever. I hate color (laughs) psychology, by the way. Um, (laughs) This is 100% you. So when you show up 100% in your business and you're not afraid to say, I'm Angela, this is my business. This is why I'm helping you. And this is why I'm the best. People trust that. And I practice what I preach. I do the exact same thing that I do for my clients. Um, So yeah, bring on the energy. If that's what you have, bring it on. Right. Yeah. No, I think... I think women that I work with and talk to really struggle with a couple of things, you know, first is the confidence. And then two, it's like this mind block that they think they have to be this idea of what people want them to be. So do you have any, any ways that we can get over those mental hurdles? Cause I think they're all mental hurdles, right? It's just our mindset. How can we work on that? (laughs) You are your biggest enemy and your biggest friend all at the same time. Right? (laughs) Yeah, your mind will sabotage you. And in fact, a lot of my clients, many of them are introverts. They are very shy. The minute I say you're going to be the face of your business, all of a sudden they think, oh, crap, my face is going to be everywhere and I don't want to be. And, you know, I'm very shy. It's not about that. It's about the expertise you're bringing. But... The golden rule is don't be professional. If you're not, if you're, I mean, there's there's professional etiquette with how you work with your clients, but then there's personality. You don't want to have a professional personality. You're not a doctor. You're not a clinician. Knock that off. That's not what people gravitate towards working with you. So the first thing is try to be as true to yourself as possible. And this Mm -hmm. is where I come in and I help figure out what is your backstory What is the golden thread that makes you go, wow, I love that part of your story. Let's amplify that now. And that's going to be the 1% that you show off to your audience. And having a personal brand, Angela, it's, it's um, it's not a sitcom. This is not a reality TV show. You're not showing them every aspect of your life, right? You're only showing them like, this is, this is where I came from. This is my journey towards this business. This is why I am I'm really good at what I'm doing. And this is what I can provide you. That is what your brand story is. Stick with it. But of course, as individuals, we evolve. As humans, we evolve. So your story is going to evolve with you. You're taking your audience through this journey now. Leave the hot mess behind. No one needs to see that. So when you're showing up professionally, what I mean is like, how are you looking on camera? Mm-hmm. Are you looking like a different person the next time you see me? Because, you know, as women, we dress with our emotions, right? Who doesn't? Mm -hmm. But one day you're like, I feel awesome and I'm going to look the best. And then the next day, you know, things has happened in your house. You're having a mental breakdown and then you look the way you feel. This is what I mean by you need to show up professionally. Make sure that you are, you never look like a hot mess. There's a strategy to that. And I actually teach my clients on how to like mitigate that. I love that. But first... Can you go back and just mention those four elements I believe that you listed that are part of your brand story? Okay, so number one, um, your brand story consists of like four things. The first part is your backstory. So where did you come from? Mm -hmm. The second part is your evolution. So 
what were some of the challenges that you went through that your clients are feeling mm -hmm. and how you overcame that? Mm -hmm. This then leads on to your expertise. So mm -hmm. why, are you, why are you the expert on fixing this specific problem for this mm -hmm. specific type of people? Mm -hmm. And number four, why you're the only expert that can help with this? I love that. that is the brand story ingredient right there. Right. I love that. And I think people really struggle with that. And, you know, it because they just don't even know where to begin. And it's so hard to talk about yourself, right? But when you kind of have a formula and a framework from which to approach it, I think that that's so helpful. So thanks for repeating that. So what is the approach that we can take to not show up as a hot mess? <laughs> So as, as a personal brand consultant, one of the things that I take all of my clients through is image consulting, Uh huh. image consulting. Um, I love this part because this is a life skill you'll have forever. You do it once with me only an hour, mm -hmm. but it change, really just change your life. So I'll tell you when this process that I went through. Mm -hmm. So the first part is a color analysis. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with color analysis, but not every color in the rainbow is going to suit you. You know, you can go into a room, right, Angela? So think of a party you went to. Someone's <laughs> wearing like a crazy, like lime green dress. They could, it could either look phenomenal or absolutely like, what's she wearing? Mm -hmm. That, that basically, like subconsciously, you know when something doesn't suit someone, but it's really hard to tell that on yourself. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I help you figure out exactly what seasonal color palette is perfect for you. And there's like 150 to 200 colors you can choose from, mm -hmm. but it's a very specific range. Stick with that. Stick with those colors. You will always look like you've had eight hours of sleep, <laughs> refreshed, ready to go. You will never look sick and you'll never look tired with those colors. Mm -hmm. Then I help you figure out what is your style. So this is where we move into the capsule wardrobe concept. Mm -hmm. This is going to be your personal brand uniform going forward. So you can like, if you think of like celebrities and stuff that you like, really famous people do have the same process where they show up dressing in the same kind of style. Mm -hmm. This is how you become memorable. This is how you start building up people's perception of you. And guess what? You are a hundred percent in control of it, not your emotions. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're dressing very strategically but you're always showing up in the best way possible. The last phase is I send you off to a, vir uh, a virtual wardrobe stylist. So for two hours, she's going to go through your entire wardrobe and you're going to split your clothes up into three different parts. And you can do this right now too, without the help of an expert. Have a yes pile where these are the clothes you feel awesome in. These are the things you wear every day. And then you have your no pile. Things are falling apart. It's too big, too small. You've never worn it. And then you're maybe thinking, I don't know if this looks good on me or not, or whatever. Go with your emotions here. She goes through, she goes through those entire piles. And what we do is, if you don't know what your body type is, you're going to find out what your body type is. And then we're going to dress you according to your body type. So it doesn't matter how big or small you are. Your body type, your shape never changes. So you might be an inverted triangle, but you might be a big inverted triangle, a little inverted triangle. That shape doesn't change. So your style, no matter how big or small you get, because I know women have a lot of uh, insecurities with their weight, that shouldn't impact how you strategically style yourself going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just knowing how to present how whatever your shape is the best way that kind of emphasizes and amplifies who you are. I mean... I think that's something that everybody should want to do. And actually, as you're going through this, I'm thinking you are like the several coaches in one. Like it's like a one-stop shop because I've worked with a stylist. I've worked with different people to do several different things that you provide in one service. So I think that that's really amazing. Um, so can, can we talk about the concept of premium branding? Uh -huh. Because... I love how you emphasize that and things that we can do to attract those high ticket clients that are going to pay us well. And, you know, th I think there are a lot of misconceptions that people just hear messages like charge your worth and things like that, but maybe aren't providing what they need to provide or doing the right messaging that they need to do to attract those premium clients. 
Yeah, I think that's a really important point because you can be charging ten thousand dollars, yeah, and then end up being a scam. <laughs> or you can charge a dollar, and then people are just like, "This, this is not going to be worth my time because it's too cheap." Right. But your value is really high. So, um, and this is this is one of the biggest things that I work on right at the beginning of your personal brand is your key services and your product pricing structure because I think as entrepreneurs, there's so many people that underprice. Mm-hmm. And I've actually had clients who overvalue, but the brand doesn't match up. So it's kind of like a really big mismatch. Hmm. When you um, a premium service or premium entrepreneur or whatever the term is, a premium brand, <laughs> you are, there's a few things we're eliminating. So you're no longer, be, you're no longer attracting clients who are going to haggle you down, negotiate you and ask for discounts. Mm-hmm. They will trust you and your process. So when you say this is going to be done in three weeks time, you better believe it's going to get done in three weeks time because you have a really robust process and a system behind the scenes, Mm -hmm. but your clients can, they know that things are going to get done because you're, you're, you're backed with this system. And also um, the money that you're charging, they know that this is going to be a premium experience of how you're going to take them from A to Z. Because again, there's a step, step step-by-step process um you're you're managing their expectation from the very beginning you're not just going to say well ten thousand dollars and in three weeks time come back and everything's going to (laughs) change you're not leaving them any questions there's no room for questions you're showing them exactly what they're going to get when how and what they need to do too so a really important distinction is this is not a one-way service this is a partnership so if you and I work together you're going to expect things from me, but guess what? I'm going to expect things from you too. You're going to have to pick up your socks and start working in this process. There's things that I'm going to expect you to do in order to help me be successful and vice versa. So this very much becomes a partnership. And this is why it becomes a premium brand experience because all of a sudden you're not doing things in silo or you're not expecting the person you hire to do everything. You're working together. And it's different Mm -hmm. from coaching because coaching I'm going to be telling you what to do and expect you to get it done with me. It's very much a done for you service, but in order for you to grow and maintain your personal brand, you need to be living your brand. I can't do that for you. Right. No, I love that idea. And so what are some of the signs that your personal brand is ready for that transition? Because you might not be ready for it right out of the gate. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you you definitely need a hunger for I've done everything and this is just not working for me or you understand how important your personal brand is because you can pivot in, with anything. One day you could be selling a service, next day you're an author or then you have, you know, you have a stage. I mean, that brand moves along with your goals. Mm-hmm. So you need to have a really clear idea of what your goals are. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of my clients actually don't know what that is. You know, I've had, I've had individuals. So I, I provide something called a brand power hour, which is a 90 minute intensive session with me. This is essentially the discovery call, except you're paying me to, to get this done. My job is to find your brand opportunities as it is now. And I've had people saying, well, I just want to make money. They don't know how much, they don't know how to get there. A lot of them realize, well, I only have a hundred dollar product. And I need like 34 clients per month, which is ridiculous because then you're going to be stuck in that hustle culture. Look, I want you to sleep more than you work. So this is why we raise the price and we change the process. Um, and a lot of clients don't actually don't know what they want. And this is why it's important to have the initial conversation because all of a sudden I've had clients saying, now I want to be an author and I want I want to have a course and I want, I want this and I want that. And they've never thought about these stuff before. So once we nail down what those goals are, guess what? We have a plan now. We work backwards and we make sure that your personal brand has a higher purpose now. It's not just about making money. It's about, well, if you want visibility and you want stage visibility, or if you want, like, I'll tell you what my personal goals are. I want a Netflix show where I can do this on TV <laughs> with other entrepreneurs. I but love that. <laughs> so I'm sharing my secret to the world and manifesting. Uh-huh. But in order for me to get there, I know I need content. I need good content. And I need content that will 
attract a lot of people in a very high volume. So as a result, Angela, I've hired an Instagram growth coach who's teaching me everything about Instagram. And this is one of the reasons why I recently started my Instagram account from scratch. How quickly can I grow my Instagram account with this really robust system in place? Starting from nothing. So I'm very much a guinea pig. But I'm the guinea pig so that my clients don't have to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you have to invest in it. If you're ready to invest in yourself, mm -hmm. then you're ready to become a premium brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so believe that if you're wanting to be a coach, if you're wanting to teach people things, you really, you have to have a coach. Like you have to have somebody that's holding you accountable and giving you new ideas and helping you navigate that as well. So how yeah, it's, like, so it's like saying, um, you're a coach. Mm -hmm. Why should I work with you? Have you gone through this before? Um, where's that, where's that trust factor? Mm -hmm. If you have never done this before, but you're telling a client that you can do this for them mm -hmm. without proof, why should they pay you? So mm -hmm. that proof is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So for busy mompreneurs, where can they start to begin to create their own personal brand that is the key here, attracting their ideal clients. Ideal clients is what you need to figure out first. Yeah. Is, um, you know, there's, you can say, well, my, I, I know my ideal client is going to be women between 20 to 30 who are going through anorexia issues, for example. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't think that's specific enough. Yeah. Right. Because you're talking marketing speak now, you know, when, when you're doing a Facebook ad, for example, you need to know age, sex, you know, gender demographic, where they're placed with branding. That doesn't matter. What you want to do is figure out how do you want to position yourself to that audience? So what I'm talking about is what is your client's desired outcome when they work with you? And what are their pain points? What are the things that they're really struggling with? And you're the only one that can fix it. That's what you need to figure out first. And then all of a sudden, you know how to like, then you'll be able to figure out what products or what services you need to create. Then you'll have a plan on how you're going to take your client from A to Z. Then you're going to try to figure out right pricing structure. How long do I, how long does my service last? Do I have a service that's one day or is it a year? Um, do I work with them every week or is it like, every week and then three what three months they're on their own like what does that look like um what do I call myself right um so one of the biggest misconceptions with a lot of solo entrepreneurs if you're calling yourself CEO president founder owner please come and talk to me because that doesn't describe anything you want a job give yourself an appropriate job title that spells out exactly what you do so I never call myself I'm the founder of Boss Diplomat I call myself a personal brand consultant and I was very intentional calling myself a consultant and not a coach. because I think coach is too, it feels really distant for me. Whereas as a consultant, I'm doing things with you and I'm, I'm very aggressively helpful with that. So I, there's an intention to everything that you're doing and even the colors. So earlier I said, I hate color psychology. And the reason why I said that is because everyone is using color psychology. Mm -hmm. So if you decided, well, I'm going to go with the color purple because it's royalty and it, you know, it's about richness. Well, 50,000 other people are using that same mentality as you. When I, when you work with me, I get in your head and we actually have a meditation like session. It's very quick, it's like five minutes, but you're sharing with me all of the images and stuff that you're seeing in your head and things that actually mean to you and things that are coming from the heart. Those are the images that are used to extract colors for your personal brand because it means something to you. Forget about color psychology. So everything is personal. Everything has an intention. Everything has a strategy. And this is how you become premium. I love it. I mean, there are just so many things there. You're just really literally giving us a roadmap on how we need to get in touch with what we want, who mm. we serve, their pain points, and how we show up and amplify that to attract the right people. That is that is really awesome. And so I would love to just dive into a little bit of your mompreneurhood and how are you juggling 
being a mompreneur and how, so what do you do to take care of yourself and make sure that you're filling your cup and you're able to serve both your clients and your family? Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a four-year-old, her name is Saifa. Um, and I decided, well, my husband and I, we wanted a kid before we moved to America, but then immigration and all of that. So uh, we decided, right, let's hold off. So I was an entrepreneur before I became a mother. Um, but I also knew if I want to continue doing what I want to do, because I'm a super control freak when it comes to my time and making sure that I have control over the things that I do. So when my daughter was born, my husband and I immediately, we were like, right, this kid needs a schedule, even when she's a baby. So what we did is we had an app called Nara, N-A-R-A, mm -hmm. the Nara app. We timed everything, Angela her feedings, her poops, her sleep, everything. And that we were able to figure out her pattern. So we adjusted ourselves to her schedule. We knew when she was going to poop, when she needed feeding, all of that. And as obviously, as she grew older, her, her schedule would change. She's now four. She still has the same sleep schedule. So I know six o'clock is going to, when she, six, 6 p.m., this kid is going to eat dinner. She's going to have a bath and be in bed by seven. Wow. She's going to sleep the whole night. She sleeps set, uh, 12 hours throughout the throughout the day. This kid does not wake up. She will wake up seven o'clock on the dot. You're very so lucky I, parent. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is I put work into it. Like I, I, I figured out her schedule uh -huh. um, and I worked around that. And that's how I was able to figure out, right. I know when she needs me and when she doesn't need me. So I, I'll give you my timetable in a nutshell. And in fact, um, if you guys go to my Instagram page, um, my handle is at boss diplomat in my story highlight this, there's a, there's an uh, icon called lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That is my day to day. I show you exactly what I do from 6am till like when I go to bed. So do you want to hear my, yeah, table. sure. Share it. I mean, I think people really love to hear people's actual schedules because yeah. they, they want ideas. They want to know how, you know, maybe that might work for them. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if my schedule is atypical. I have no idea, but my schedule is, I hear, I'm not an early bird, but obviously with the kid, you have to be. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so 6am I'm at the door. I'm on, I'm, I'm on a walk because I barely get time to go out um, and get some sunshine. So that's my opportunity to go out, have a walk, listen to an audio book, come back 7 a.m. I know my kid's awake. So I get her ready for school. She has breakfast. 7.50, she's on the school bus. Um, she loves the school bus where they're so American. It's amazing. I think you guys take that for granted. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> iconic yellow bus. It gets me excited every day. Um, so she's off to school. Um, so at 7 50 8 o'clock I have a basement in um, in my house I do I do boxing every single day that's my thing so I'm downstairs hitting the bags for like 40 minutes hit the shower nine o'clock I eat breakfast 9 30 is my first client meeting so with my work schedule I don't take meetings Monday and Friday Mondays are my content day so those are the days where I'm filming filming and creating content for my business. Fridays is my networking day. So this is when I do lead generation and connect with people that I meet at networking events. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days, 9.30 to 12.30 is when I'm meeting with leads or I'm doing client face-to-face -face client meetings like this until 12.30. So 9.30 to 12.30 is when I have my face-to-face -face meetings. I wind down at 12.30 and that's when I kind of like catch up with emails because I don't have time. And then I see my kid at two o'clock. So that's when I quickly grab lunch between two till six. It's my girl time with my daughter. So we have like four hours of just like mummy daughter time doing whatever the hell we want unrestricted. And this is us every single day. So I'm still very much a full-time mom when she comes back home from school. Six o'clock, dinner, bed, girls down at 7 p.m. When my daughter's asleep, I, I, I play video games every day for an hour. That's my other thing. Uh, so I play video games for an hour. And then um, between 7.30 till about 9.30, I do, that's when I do my client projects. So that's when I sit down, I have deep work and I get my client projects done. 
I need to give myself two hours to get this project done, but I get it done. Mm -hmm. Then finally, 9.30, I wind down, disconnect from computers and stuff. I do yoga for about half an hour. And then I hit the hay around about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And that's the end of my day. That's me every single day, except weekends. Weekends is like whatever the hell I want. <laughs> no, I love that. I mean, for so many reasons, you put multiple things in your day that serves you. Mm. And you also make your daughter the center of your schedule. Like you're planning your day around her and what works for her. And I think so often we think, we're the parent. This is my obligation. I have to like do meet with clients, blah, blah, blah. And we try to fit the parenting in on the backside. And I don't think that serves anybody. You're not having good enough boundaries. You're not serving your family the way that they probably need. And so it, it, it adds to a lot of frustration. And so I love that schedule. I love that you shared that because I think people don't really know how they can structure their day potentially that serves them and has a business that serves them and they're not constantly serving the business. Yeah. I mean, let me, let me just throw it out there. You are the boss. You have a hundred percent control over your time. Don't let other dictate what that is for you. Mm -hmm. Even if you can squeeze in half an hour for yourself, schedule it in. If it's not on the schedule, it's not going to happen. And then with regards to your your meetings, like if don't like you're not a nine to five, okay? Let's just drop that. Do you don't have to work nine to five? I I call myself a part-timer because my hours are here and here at mm-hmm. the beginning of the day and the end of the day. I never take client meetings between the hours of one till six ever. Like I'm just unavailable. They don't need to know why I'm unavailable. Yeah. If you can't meet me, you have to wait till my next slot is available. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But you have to be really strict and protective over your time. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? That's the one thing you'll never, ever get back. So Mm -hmm. why give it away to something that doesn't serve you? Yeah, I think it's just like this leftover corporate mentality. If somebody has worked in corporate, like they're just supposed to be on all the time. And so creating your own schedule and having the freedom to do that is sometimes just really hard for somebody to get into their mind that no you're you're the boss of your life you're the boss of your time and so you set the tone and the schedule so I love that so much yeah like I have 12 meetings a week that's a lot because my meeting if I if I was to meet people for half an hour and they were just like leads my Mm -hmm. like lead clients I'm giving them half an hour of my time before I move on to the next call. If I'm working with a client, I'm meeting a client for an hour. So if you were to do the maths, which I'm terrible at doing, that's between like eight to 12 meetings a week. That is more than enough. I don't need to see more people than that. Yeah. But you can do that if number one, you, you are very organized. And number two, if you're charging what you're charging, you can easily make that time, that, that money back. Mm-hmm. You need to know how to do it. Mm-hmm. No, I think you've given us permission and you've given us a lot of ideas on how we can do that. So I love that. So thank you for that. So before we end the episode, I would love to hear one fairy boss mother piece of wisdom that you would like to share with listeners. And it doesn't have to be just one and it can be about branding. It can be about motherhood. Um, So yeah, what would that be? You are 100% in charge of your time, own it, control it, use it to your advantage, and you decide how you want to use that time. Like, honestly, I'm going to reiterate this. Don't let your kids or I say your boss, if you don't have a boss, you're the boss. Give yourself permission to give yourself time off. And if you're working on your birthday, stop. Like, seriously, that's the one day where you should like go all out, leave the kids behind, do something for yourself. <laughs> Like I just, um, like this year I spent two days in New York city, Mm -hmm. just like doing whatever I wanted and again, schedule it in. So Mm -hmm. especially if you're an entrepreneur and a busy mom, give yourself one day off, like a full day off, no kids, no husband, no one, just you alone, but give yourself something fun to do. Like 
go to like float therapy or get your get that massage or go hang gliding or whatever the hell you want to do just do it but make sure it's scheduled in your diary because they'll give you something exciting to look forward to Mm -hmm. every single month and it's got nothing to do with any of the job titles you have under your hat this is just like a you thing Mm -hmm. and I don't know if you have like any comment on that it just makes me think of like the toxic productivity culture we have here here Mm. in the U.S. and yeah yeah yeah, it is. I mean, I visit other countries and I can immediately feel like how much more relaxed it is. You can feel it in the air. Like I was in Vancouver last summer and I was like, this is like the most chill place I have ever been. <laughs> it was yeah. great. But I love that you're reminding us that play can be productive. You know, it really helps us kind of fuel back I mean, it's one of the reasons why I live in the Orlando area, because we're at the theme parks almost every weekend (laughs) playing. We have lots of fun. I love that you reminded us of that. That's so important. So I am sure that listeners are going to want to connect with you and find out more about what you do, because I think it's just really extraordinary that you combine all of these different elements in one service I think that that's really tremendous so where can they connect with you okay so if you want to connect with the fairy boss mother um, obviously go to my website it's uh, www.bossdiplomat.com and did you realize my name is boss diplomat so I'm merging like boss and diplomat together yeah yeah Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, (laughs) you can follow me um, on Instagram I'm really active on Instagram so that's at boss diplomat And I also have my own YouTube channel, which is also at Boss Diplomat. So everything's very consistent. I'm super easy to find, guys. Mm -hmm. So I would love to for free 30-minute mini brand sessions with anyone who needs my help. So you're not meeting a member of my team. You actually get to meet me. So um, you'll have half an hour of Fairy Boss Mother time. Mm -hmm. You know, tell tell me all your, what are the struggles that you're going through and how like personal branding can fix a lot of that Mm -hmm. and really like take you to the next stage of, what you want to do next in your life and what else can I share I think I shared a lot today (laughs) yeah you you definitely you provided so much value and you're just reminding me and I think we also kind of get into the YouTube university or podcast university or googling and Mm. these things are so tough to find out on your own as somebody who's worked with coaches and And work with other people. And so I highly recommend, I mean, just talking to you, you've raised my vibe. You've got great energy. So if you just need a boost in your energy and need a little more direction, definitely connect with the boss diplomat. You've just provided so much value today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting, allowing me to share my voice and, and, you know, I want to help as many people as possible because I work Mm -hmm. industry-wide because my process doesn't change. You can be a carpenter, you could be a a healer or a massage therapist. Your personal brand is you. So as long as I'm working with the founder and owner of that business, and if it's you that I'm working directly with, oh my God, we can create so much magic together. (laughs) I love that. I love that you also reminded people that you work with people in all different industries. You don't have to just be a coach or Mm -hmm. Um, a creator of some sort or something like that. Yeah, I think that that's really important to remember that these are principles that can apply to almost anything that you have a business around. So I love it. absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the amazing conversation today. Yeah, thank you, Angela. This is really fun. Yeah, it's been wonderful. Thanks. Thank you.